the Bears. Some of their fans wish they would go away and come back with a better team. Ryan Poles, <laughs> the new GM, when you consider all the tearing down that the Bears are doing, it's easy to come to the conclusion they're rebuilding. Here's Poles on whether or not he agrees with the assessment that the Bears are indeed rebuilding. Um, are you rebuilding, or, or is there a different word you use? Well, yeah, no, the rebuild thing's, like, super sensitive. No, we're, we're, we're constructing a very good football team. And regardless of how you use whatever term that is, we just continue to add talent and young talent, older talent, whatever it takes to make the best team possible. You know, actually, you know, late night with the wife, you're watching TV, you get like the uh, home network where, you know, there's some rooms that are good. You might have to redo some countertops over here, some fresh paint over there. Some rooms are good. You don't need to touch them. So. That's kind of the thought process there. That's not a rebuild either. <laughs> it's a fixer up room. Yeah. Well, I'm, gl- I'm glad he's not the only one that gets stuck watching those shows about th- this house. They've got all these shows about this house there and this house there and fix up this house. And I won the lottery, go so find me a house. And the problem is, like, I, it's like, I really don't want to watch this. And I sit down in five minutes, I'm fully engrossed. So uh, anyway, uh, I digress. The Bears are rebuilding. Now, yes, rebuilding yes. implies there's something that you had that you're trying to build back to. Maybe that's the right answer. How can we be rebuilding? What if we had that we would aspire to be again? Although they did have two playoff appearances under Matt Nagy and company, I just feel like the Bears are constantly trying to be something that they're incapable of willing themselves to be. And it's always something that they're it's like trying to it's like trying to manipulate a handful of jello. Like, they can never fully hold on to it, and it's slipping through their fingers the harder they try to grip it, and they can't get themselves to be what they want to be. And this year, there's a great opportunity to turn it around quickly if they can put some talent around Justin Fields. The Vikings are rebuilding. The Lions are building, trying to build. The NFC is wide open for playoff spots. The Bears could turn this thing around fast, and I like the attitude, but the reality is... When you look at where the Bears were and what they've done this offseason by shedding talent, they are re-something. I don't know what comes after the re, but they're definitely re-something. Uh, I mean, 100%. I, I, don't, I don't understand. You know, it just it's one of those words right now in the NFL that nobody wants to use. Like, it's like, it shows weakness. You're not a man. No, you know what it shows? Right. You know what it shows? It shows that we don't think we can win the Super Bowl this year because every team at some level wants to send that message that this year can be our year because look at how fast the Bengals turned around. So we're not rebuilding. We're ready. They, that's why I think they don't want to use that word. Maybe you're right. Because they want the fans to think that this year is a year that can result in a special season. Yeah, I, I think you're right. You know, Bears fans are pretty knowledgeable, though. I mean, we, we experienced that the, the opener you know, a few years ago when they were questioning Mitchell Trubisky. They're no idiots. Bears fans knows what, know, know what's going on. Like, they know what's going on. You said it right. I mean, come on. Khalil Mack, gone. Akeem Hicks, gone. Oh, two best players on the defensive side of the ball. Gone? Oh, yeah, we're, 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 we're retooling for the Super Bowl run. Allen Robinson, best receiver on the team. Gone. We're retooling. Yeah, they're rebuilding. They, they have to. They're playing a different style of football completely. They're getting away from 3-4 principles on defense. They're going to be more on the 4-3 side of things. They're going to change the way they play offense a little bit. You're going to see a Green Bay-ish type offense, probably with Justin Fields' movement stuff, a part of the the mixture there on that side of the ball. And they got some major holes to fill all over the roster now with, what, like you said, what they've done this offseason and the new regime they have there. So I don't expect a whole lot from them this year. I look at this as a year where, yeah, they're trying to get things in order. They need to get their quarterback a little bit more talent at receiver. I think some help there. But, yeah, I look at this as a total rebuild. Let's get things in order to, to make a run, you know, the next few years after this. There's another word that starts with R-E that ends up being relevant if they don't get enough help around Justin Fields and he struggles. The season becomes a referendum on whether or not he's the guy. And I had a conversation to that effect on the score in Chicago a couple of weeks ago, and a lot of Bears fans lost their minds. But I think it's a very simple logic. If the guy has no help and he stinks, there's going to be a lot of Bears fans that don't say, well, he didn't have the help. They're just going to say he stinks. If he was good, he wouldn't need the help. If he was good, we wouldn't need to have all this. He's not good. 
Well, no, he's not good because he doesn't have any help. You know, if you're running off all your good players and you don't bring in guys who can help him be great and then he's not great, you got to be understanding that it's going to take some time. But this is year two for Justin Fields. And I think the problem is if you don't do what you need to do to boost him and he doesn't have a great year, that's when the questions start to emerge and that puts even more pressure on him next year. So I think that the fact that, that you know, they have this great young quarterback, and now's the time to go swing the bat and spend the money. And, you know, he's under – we talk about this all the time. He's under his rookie contract. Go spend. Go do some things. Have some guys who have big cap numbers. Keep Allen Robinson if you have to. Find a way to work it out. Have some continuity and some consistency to give this guy something to build on. He's got new everything. New coaching staff, new players. What do we expect from Justin Fields this year? But the problem is, if he struggles, people are going to blame it on him, and it'll be wrong when it happens, but it's inevitable that it will. Yeah, it, well, and, 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 and I agree in a lot of ways. He's the best asset uh, they have on their football team right now. I mean, I'm, I'm just thinking off the top of my head. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, he's the best asset they have. He's the most tangible thing they have to go, wait, this we, we're, we, we're good here, so let's just make this a little bit better. And you're like – Sell everybody on him. You're right to not create that headache. I I, I agree. I, I think they are playing with fire a little bit with the lack of weapons or options they have around him. Uh, it's important for a young quarterback. You know, again, a lot of the young, great quarterbacks we've ever seen really pop in the league, they got thrown into something you brought up a few times this offseason, situations where it was great. Dan Marino said, Hut, whoa, it's Duper and Clayton. This is awesome. Patrick Mahomes said, Hud, oh my gosh, it's Tyree Kill and Kelsey. I just got to come in the NFL with awesome players. I know these guys are awesome too, but they got launched into awesomeness, okay, because of the talent they had around. And then nobody questioned them ever again. Nobody questions. Like even Mahomes, who had year, you know, didn't play well early this year. We were just, oh, who cares? He'll get it right. It doesn't matter. He'll get it right, blah, blah, blah. We've seen it. We know it. You know, so you, uh, you, you silence all the BS when you just do that for your quarterback a little bit. And, yeah, we see some teams every now and then where I want to go, what What are we doing here? Didn't we just make the same mistake with Mitchell Trubisky in Chicago and we got no talent around him? And then it was, oh, it's him. Get him out of here. Let's not do that again here with Justin Fields. Yeah, no talent and coaching that didn't fit his strengths. Exactly. He was the one to blame. Right. And that's where, look, I. this was my concern last year. When you authorize a trade-up, in what ultimately becomes the final year for GM Ryan Pace and head coach Matt Nagy, you put yourself in a position where you quite possibly get a new regime that doesn't believe in the quarterback that they traded up to draft. They want their own guy. They don't really believe in Justin Fields. We don't know the answer to that question, but I know this. They probably didn't say that if they believe that during their job interview. Mm -hmm. They said all the right things. That's how you get the job. Yeah, we got a plan for Justin Fields. Yeah, he's our guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you get there, and it's like, well. Or, or it's surround him with nothing, and when he struggles, well, you know what? Maybe Ryan Pace and Matt Nagy were wrong. Maybe that's another reason why they're not here. You know, you fired them, so you don't believe in them. Why would you believe in the guy they traded up to get? They, that's another example of why they didn't know what they were doing. There's all sorts of ways that can there be manipulated is, by a coach right. and a GM who want their guy. Yeah. And, th and th think about that. Think I about know. that. I know. It plays You're, to this you've year. You've been given the keys to the car. You're the new sheriffs in town. And you're going to take the guy that the last regime believed in. You want to prove that you can find your own guy. That's just human nature. And again, they may love Justin Fields. My point is they're not putting him in a position to thrive this year. Now, and, and we'll see what the offense does. We'll see how it's constructed. We'll see if it's a good fit for him. But he needs some help around him. It can't just be a one-man band. Uh, by the way, I'm not letting you get away with awesome. Awesome. I know you were doing it for effect. Yeah. I know you were doing it for effect. I was, yes. But it's still, it's still, I know. It's still a Sims is. <laughs> okay. Awesome that's, that's fine. I expected it to come up tomorrow at some point, but that wasn't intentional. I'm glad you at least saw that. Yes, it was for effect. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> but it's not. It's too late. It's too late to uh, to to have that caveat to the Sims. I know. Playbook. Yeah, bring I'm it sure on. We'll hear bring it on. EJ's voice tomorrow. Sims. Simsism. <laughs> Awesomeness. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.